So the first question was asked by Megan in Lason, and if Megan, if I butchered your last name, I'm really sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> Megan asked this question on YouTube. How do you know if your saddle fits properly? So this is a question we saw a lot of people kind of submit yes. and ask, because not yes. all of them have access to a saddle fitter. Yes. So how do you generally kind of give guidelines for people to check their own saddles? It's a very good question. Um, here are some very simple guidelines of what to look for when you have your saddle on your horse's back. Um, in the barn I'll, on as level ground as possible. Um, we want the saddle to sit between the 8th and the 18th thoracic verte vertebrae. Okay. Okay. The 8th is two fingers behind the back of the scapula. Okay, good. We can do that. <laughs> okay. And the 18th is the last rib. All right. So your weight, when you sit in the saddle, your weight is carried around the rib cage. So okay. two behind the scapula and then to, to the, the last rib. rib. If you okay. go beyond the last rib, you're on the kidneys and you can cause discomfort. You do not want to be so there. So it is very important to stick within our parameters of okay. the 8th and 18th thoracic vertebrae. Okay. Um, the saddle should sit balanced. You want the deepest part of the seat in the middle. Um, we like to have three fingers clearance between the wither and the, the underneath side of a, the gullet area here. And when you'd be doing that portion of it, would you have a saddle pad or would you just have the no, saddle on I the back? Would, I would take this, have the saddle just on the horse's back. Okay. Sometimes the saddle pads can um, disguise how the saddle is fitting. Okay. Um, so have the horse naked. Um, another good guide is to have two fingers either side of the wither here. So when your horse is turning his head and the shoulders, he has room to move, he or she has room to move. Okay. Okay. So three fingers, two fingers either side of the wither, saddle balanced with the deepest part in the middle. And then another good tip is to look, I should come around here. Yeah, we can lean right over here. We can come around here because he's a small pony. Um, <laughs> we can lift up and make sure that the panel here bears all the way along. So this is not bearing all the way along. See that? Yep. So the, he, this guy needs some groceries perhaps. <laughs> um, so you want that panel to bear and conform to the shape of the horse all the way. So this part should be making contact all Correct. the way through. Correct. You want as much bearing surface around the ribs as possible. Okay, perfect. So when you were saying as far as like leveling, are you talking about like the pommel of the cantle should be like? Yes, it's it will vary with different types of saddles. Um, the all-purpose or a close contact saddle will sit more, perhaps more level. If you put your thumb here and then draw a line, it will be more level than a dressage saddle because that's going to have a deeper seat. Yes. So really you want to look for the deepest part in the middle of the saddle. Okay. Okay. So our key takeaway, if we were just to do it generally at home, is first we would want to make sure we're between the eighth, eight. eighth vertebrae and the 18th. Correct. Yes. And, awesome. And, um, you can put sticky dots. Oh, I'm definitely going to need sticky dots. Sticky dots. <laughs> and that will give you your parameter. And then without the saddle pad on, we would make sure right. we can fit three fingers underneath. Yes. And then we want to make sure that we have two fingers clearance on either side. This way. Yeah. Three fingers stacked, not this way stacked okay here and then two fingers either side and then make sure we're having contact all the way all around all the way along yes perfect but you probably would still recommend because every horse can be different every saddle can be different they're all so different and so individual as are we as yes. riders so um i would always recommend having a professional come out and and do a check in case you know, it needs to, needs work or needs to be rebalanced, etc. Is there anything you could tell, like in the horse's like movement, that may indicate to you, like hmm, there might be something with the saddle going on here? Um, a lot of the time, it could be behavioural. Mm -hmm. um, when you, the horses get girthy yes. and they don't, you know, they object to the girth being tightened. Um, a big tell tell sign is um, they don't want to go forwards, or they okay. start stopping at the fences. Um, swishing their tails, ears pinned back, lots of behavioral issues. Which are signs I think all of us have seen from time to time. Yeah. Let's be honest with ourselves. Yeah. Spooking. Yep. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. I'm going to have to go home and check my saddle apparently after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was awesome. I think that's a great place for people to get started. And hopefully, Megan, that gives you a great place to get started in your saddle fitting.